Always wanted to learn how to create a filter icon but never knew exactly where to start? Well, if that's the case, then you're in luck since in this video I'm going to walk you through the entire process and show you how to create two variations of the same icon using Adobe Illustrator. I'm Andrew and you're watching an Envato Task Plus tutorial. As with every new project, we're going to start by setting up a new document by heading over to File, New, or by using the Ctrl N keyboard shortcut which will bring up the following window. Here we'll want to set our profile to web and then increase the number of artboards to 2, distancing them at 32 pixels from one another. Moving on down, we're going to define both the width and height of our artboards to 32 pixels. As soon as we hit OK, we can start working on our little project by opening up the layers panel and then creating a secondary layer, naming them both so that we can separate our icons from our reference grids. Position yourself onto the bottom layer and let's create the main shape for our reference surface using a 32 by 32 pixel square, which we'll color into a dark orange, making sure to center align it to the left artboard afterwards. Add the active drawing area using a smaller 28 by 28 pixel square, which we'll color in white, and then position to the center of the previous shape making sure to select and group both of them together using the Ctrl G keyboard shortcut. Once you're done, create a copy of the resulting grid and then paste it onto the secondary artboard. While basic, this reference grid will give us an all-around 2 pixels protective padding which should prevent our icon from being clipped when used by other people. As soon as we finish setting up the grids, we can lock the current layer and then move on up to the second one where we'll start working on the actual icons. Position yourself onto the first artboard and then create the upper section of the funnel shape symbol using a 24 by 12 pixels rectangle, which we'll color using a dark gray, and then position at a distance of 2 pixels from the center of the active drawing area's top edge. To do this, we're going to switch over to the pixel preview mode by heading over to View. Pixel Preview, or by using the Alt Ctrl Y keyboard shortcut, which will then allow us to see the actual pixel grid. Add the funnel's lower body using a 6x12 pixels rectangle, which will position below the previous one so that their interfacing paths overlap. Next, we're going to adjust the shape of the larger rectangle by individually selecting its bottom anchor point using the Direct Selection tool and then dragging them to the inside so they end up overlapping those of the smaller shape. Adjust the lower body by selecting its bottom right anchor point and then pushing it to the top by a distance of 4 pixels using the directional arrow keys. Once you're done, select both shapes and then combine them into a single larger one by opening up the Pathfinder panel and then using its Unite shape mode. Give the resulting shape an outline by creating a copy which we'll paste in front and then adjust by first flipping its fill with its stroke using the Shift X keyboard shortcut and then opening up the stroke panel and setting its weight to 4 pixels and its corner to round join. As soon as we've added the outline, we can select and group the two together using the Ctrl G keyboard shortcut. By adding the outline, we're basically creating two style variations of the same symbol since we can easily turn it into a line icon by selecting and then removing its fill shape. Since we're pretty much done working on the first icon, we can position ourselves onto the second artboard where we'll gradually build our second one. Start by creating the main shape for the center dial using a 4x28 pixels round and rectangle with a 2 pixels corner radius, which will center align to the underlying artboard. Add a knob using a smaller 8x4 pixels round and rectangle with a 2 pixels corner radius, which will position at a distance of 8 pixels from the previous shape's top anchor point. Once we have both shapes in place, we can select and then group them together using the Ctrl G keyboard shortcut. Create the left and right sliders using two copies of the one that we've just finished working on, which will then align to the side edges of the active drawing area. All we have to do now is horizontally reflect the two copies by first selecting them both 
and then right clicking and then going to transform, reflect, horizontal. Since at this point we're pretty much done, we can select and group all of the icons composing shapes so that they won't get separated by accident. That being said, I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you in the next one.